हेलो हेलो आई होप यू आर ऑल लिस्निंग टू मी सो लेट मी टेक द क्वेश्चन वन बाय वन ऑल राइट so let me take the very first question now so which question is today okay let me take the first question now the question one this was by kumarasan so I start with Mr. Kumarasan's question, question number one. This is related to saliva withdrawal. During the withdrawal of saliva from the can, we have to maintain the constant distance between top layer of saliva in can and lip ring roller for avoiding the stretch or breakage of saliva in clear zone. I don't have clear idea about how to select a spring. For a particular type of fiber, for example, polyester is voluminous fiber than the cotton. If I am using the same spring for polyester saliva, is it affect the quality of saliva like this? Please explain how to choose a can spring for different fibers. Okay. Now, generally, can springs once the cans are bought, the springs are not really changed. But if we want to switch from cotton to polyester, the best thing would be to reduce the weight of polyester fiber in the can. Because we all know that polyester is a voluminous fiber. Therefore, if we can, let us say, if the can capacity of is of 22 kilo for cotton, if I want to put 22 kilo of polyester, obviously the column height will go much beyond what we expect for cotton. So the best thing would be that you reduce the quantity of polyester that you put into the saliva. Maybe you can adjust it to 18 kilo or 16 kilo. That one has to check so that the total height of the column remains more or less same. That's what we generally do. And obviously, they will not be able to match exactly the space constant what is suitable for cotton. And uh, but that is how it can be managed. In an industrial situation, the other question is mixing in carding machine. How to calculate the blending delay time in carding machine? The blending delay time is not really relevant to the carding machine. This is relevant for, for especially for our, your um, blow room uh, in the multi mixtures and also in the draw frames. So mixing on the carding machine, as we have um, discussed in some lectures, is because of the generation of layers of fibers on the surface of the cylinder. Because whatever fibers are fed to the cylinder from the liquid inside, all of it does not get transferred to the doffer immediately. Part of it gets transferred; the rest remains on the cylinder. And the fibers are continuously being fed on the liquid inside. As a result, layer after layer of fibers form on the cylinder. And from this accumulated fibers on the cylinder, part of the material always get transferred to the doffer. And because of these layer by layer deposition of fibers on the cylinder, we get some amount of mixing on cylinder. This mixing action is especially more important in the context of woolen or worsted card, where mixing is really important, and there it plays a very very important role. The next question is geometrical model of drafting. The question is in the geometrical model of drafting, how to arrive? The equation for finding the number of fibers in the front beard. The number of fibers would be the number of fibers which are there in the cross section of the saliva. So, if we can roughly estimate the 
number of fibers in the cross section of this fiber, then we will be able to know that many fibers are actually gripped by the nib of the drafting rollers. And the simple calculation for this is that if I know the average count of fiber, an average count of fiber, then you take the ratio of these two, that will give you an average value of number of fibers which are there in the cross section of this fiber. Okay. The next question is roller setting in draw frame. Okay. What is the difference between 2.5% span length and 5% FS length? Is it same or different? And please give the example for that. Do you all know the definition of span length? 2.5% span length, whatever is the value of span length, let us say 2.5% span length value is, let us say, uh, 28 millimeter. That means 2.5% fibers will be more than 25 millimeter in length. Rest of the fibers will be less than 25, uh, two, uh, rest of the fibers less than 28 millimeter. So, and 5% FE's length is the 5% fibers which are having a, a length. These two, uh, the correspondence between these two, one has to see the, some papers where or the norms books of Citra or maybe Nitra or Atira, they must have done some correlation analysis between the span length and the affix length, uh, how much they correlate with each other. This data is not there right now in front of me, so I just therefore just cannot comment as of now. Uh, next is the roller lapping in draw frame. The bigger diameter roller will reduce the possibility of roller lapping because of its low curvature. Radius of curvature is inversely proportional to the curvature, so that the bigger diameter rollers have high radius of curvature. Yes, but in the assignment we displayed high radius of curvature is not acceptable answer. I think we have you know, clarified this point and uh, it is correct that bigger diameter rollers have low curvature, but their radius of curvature is high because we all know that the curvature is calculated on the basis of radius, one upon radius is the curvature. So bigger the radius of a roller, what is the curvature? That is how we also explained and clarified this point in 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 some you know, whatever I think and that was a uh, in some classes probably or maybe you have given some answers sometimes back regarding the curvature issue. With this, we stop the questions raised by Mr. Kumarishan. Questions are very nice. And it appears that you are taking a lot of interest in the subject. I wish you all the best and good luck. The next set of questions are coming from Ms. Sandhya, who is from Anna University. Hello, Sandhya, I think you are there as one of the viewers and listening to me. The very first question is, why the width of cotton card is less when compared to woolen card? Very, very nice questions. Now, the in the cotton card, see the difficulty is there in the design of the flats. See, the flats are supported at two points. But even the rigid bend, we must have discussed in the in some lectures that there are two points on which the entire flat rod is supported. And the rod bends. So unless we can increase the stiffness of the rod, we'll not be able to maintain a constant setting from left hand end to right hand end of the at an end of the card that is in between the flat and the card, the setting will be difficult to maintain if the flat sags in the middle because of low stiffness. 
So if we want to increase the width, this is only possible if we are in a position to increase the stiffness of the flats. So today probably there are some you know, machine manufacturers that have increased the width. Generally the width of the cylinder or the topper is around close to one meter. So if we can increase it, uh, people are trying to increase it by increasing the stiffness of the flat. If we can increase the stiffness of the, of the stiffness, then we will be able to increase the width of the cutting machine and that way we will be able to increase the productivity of the machine as well. Now the point in the case of woolen card, the setting between the a worker stripper and the cylinder this setting is much much wider than what we generally maintain in the case of cotton card you all know in the case of cotton card the flat cylinder setting goes to around 10,000 which is very very narrow in comparison to what we keep in the case of woolen card which is much wider in comparison to cotton so therefore in the case of woolen card we still can go for wider cylinder length or width because the settings are not as narrow as it is in the case of uh, cotton card settings is much wider we can have a long shop on which we have the workers and the strippers assembly and therefore fortunately in the case of woolen card we the width is much larger and the productivity is also much more in comparison to cotton card. The other question is in dropping, why don't we have a upon drafting? Excellent question. Very nice that why don't we have upon drafting for draw frame? In the draw frame, upon drafting is not possible because the bulk of the material is very, very high and the production speed is also very high. At such a high speed, the aprons will get abraded so fast and that every now and then we have to change the aprons. You can just imagine the speed of a draw frame. The front roller speed today, nowadays, it goes to the order of 600 meters per minute or 700 meters per minute. And single delivery draw frame, it has gone up to 800 meters per minute. So it hovers between 400 to 700 meters per minute. Whereas if we go to speed frame or ring spinning, the speeds are hardly 20 meters per minute. So the speed is very, very slow there. And the aprons, which are made from synthetic rubbers, can last for maybe three months, four months, six months, depending upon the manufacturers. In the case of draw frame, at such a high speed, the aprons will be damaged very fast. This is point number one. The point number two, the bulk is very, very high. The drafting force will increase tremendously. And uh, it will be very difficult to draft such a huge bulk of material, which is in between the two aprons. At the same time, the other problem is that at this stage, there are a lot of still dust left in the cotton fiber, in the case of cotton especially. Because on the draw frames, as we all know, that the entire drafting unit is set within a, a negative uh, pressurized chamber so that whatever dusts are released because of the drafting, these dusts are sucked out. That means that still there are a lot of dust there. So the aprons will get damaged very fast as well. And hence, the draw frame manufacturers have never gone for aprons on draw frame. I hope this clears your doubt and thank you. The other question, we have one more. While processing trashy cotton, the tooth density has to be increased. Tooth density has to be increased, okay. But in one of the assignments, the accepted answer was that the tooth angle has to be reduced not necessarily the tooth density has to be increased. See, when the trash is too much, there is a difficulty in the sense that the trash may get lost between the teeth. And therefore, the, it will get 
lost in between the teeth and hence it will impair the carding quality. So tooth density should not be increased. On the contrary, what we can do, we can increase the speed of the cylinder so that there is more centrifugal force on the trash particles and they are thrown away. The other thing is that tooth angle should be reduced. Purpose is same, that is the, it will help to eject the trashy matter from the surface of the cylinder. So two prong strategy can be taken. One is tooth angle. The other thing is speed of the cylinder. But we should, I know that if you want to reduce the angle, there is a possibility that uh, the density may increase, but we can manage it by having less number of uh, teeth in the cross directions. Okay. The next question is coming, Kumarasan. The liquor in tooth specification, okay. Why we are using negative inclination angle for positive synthetics? Okay, this is the, the synthetic fibers. Mostly they are long fibers. Whereas in the case of cotton, there are many fibers which will be less than 12 millimeter, 14 millimeter, or even 8 millimeter, 4 millimeter, and so. Besides, the synthetic fibers have higher coefficient of friction between metal and the fiber. So in order to ensure that the fibers get transferred easily from the liquidin surface to the cylinder, we need to keep the liquidin angle negative. Otherwise, there is a chance that the liquidin surface will get clogged with the fibers. The reason is I coefficient of friction between liquidin teeth and the fiber. And the second is that majority of the fibers are long and they are therefore held not by just one tooth, there may be multiple number of tooths are actually holding the fiber. And hence, to ensure smooth passage of the fiber from the ligarine surface to the cylinder surface, the angle needs to be made negative. All right. There is one question that is from Nandana. This question is how to prepare the spinning section of gate examination. I cannot give the answer to this question. <laughs> gate examination, you can check the past gate papers and prepare yourself for the gate examinations. So these past papers are available and uh, you can really consult them and uh, prepare. Okay. Another uh, question. Also, Mr. Kumarashan, we are really very, very much interested to know more and more about the spinning. I would like to study, now the question, let me read. I would like to study more about the effect of fiber density on sliver can spring pressure. I have collected some information from sliver can manufacturer website. Is there any textbook research paper? Unfortunately, there are no textbook available that discusses or explain the relationship between the can spring pressure and your uh, the content of the material within the can. I have not come across any research paper on this particular topic. However, we have done some work. I have personally done some work in a textile mill related to this. And there are some data available with me 
which I have not really yet published because some more work needs to be done to complete the study. But this, this idea is that the very purpose of the spring is to lift the column of saliva which is there within the can so that the top layer is always uh, reaching the top part of the can and hence the distance between the, the lifting distance is remains manageable uh, from the point of view that the slivers should not get stressed. If the slivers are strong, especially at the cart slivers are generally stronger than the let's say comb slivers. Comb slivers are very, very weak. So you'll be more concerned about this lifting distance, especially with comb sliver. Whereas in the case of carded sliver, it is important but may not be that important. And uh, in the case of drawn slivers, if you give the sliver two draw frame passages, you got this, this also reduces the strength of the sliver because as the fibers become more and more parallel, the strength of the sliver goes down. So there is a chance of undue stretch also with the twice drawn slivers. When I'm feeding these slivers to the you know, simplex or speed frame. So there is really a problem. But you can you know, do some study and try to understand the relationship between the spring constant and the uh, the height of the column of saliva, how does it change? And what is the effect of that on the quality of the saliva or quality of the yarn? All right, I think this gives you the answer. Any other questions? So if there is no more questions from the viewer side, then I wish all of you my very best for the examinations, which is due. And I hope you have enjoyed the course. And thank you for your suggestions, your questions. And uh, we'll offer some other course, maybe next semester also. Uh, and if you want, you can also join uh, these courses in future. Thank you. So we'll wait for 10 minutes. Hmm? In the meantime, you can think. I am here only. We'll take up some more questions. There's a break for 10 minutes now.
Okay, there are few questions. Let me take up the questions. Uh, there's a question from Sandhya. It's all about are all fine fibers mature ones? This is not part of the course, but I can give you the answer. Not necessarily that fine fibers are all matured ones. This is that see the, the fiber may appears to be fine, uh, but maybe it is immature. The more immature the fibers are on the instrument, they will appear to be fine because the mass or unit length of the fiber is going to be less. So there is no guarantee that fine fibers will automatically means they are mature. They may be mature, they may not be mature. So maturity depends upon the variety of the fibers and the genetic nature of the fibers and the climatic conditions, the, uh, the region in which the fibers are grown. So the answer is not necessarily that fine fibers will be mature fibers. The questions now coming from Kumarisan. What is the mechanism of leading hook formation in carding machine? All right. I think you can look back the lecture when we discussed about the formation of both trailing hook and leading hook. But again, let me tell you that the hooks are generally form while the fibers are being transformed from cylinder to doffer. On the cylinder surface also we have seen that fibers remain in the form of hooks because they are gripped by the uh, teeth of the cylinder. So prior to their arrival to the cylinder doffer zone, Many fibers on the surface of the cylinder are actually in the hook state. I think we have not, no, I have not really discussed the mechanism of fiber transform, transferred from cylinder to doffer, and their configuration on cylinder surface and doffer surface is much detailed in this course, because this is a basically introductory course to that part actually left out deliberately, but you can see one of my own paper, which was published in Texel Research Journal long ago, sometimes in the middle of the 80s, which was part of my MTech work. I don't remember the exact year, but you can see a paper sometimes, I think, in 83, 84, Texel Research Journal, where we have proposed some mechanism and the way the fibers are on the surface of the cylinder and on the surface of the doffer or in the sliver. The point is to give the answer that when the cylinder, the surface speed is very high and the fibers which are sitting on the cylinder are approaching doffer, doffer surface speed is much, much slower in comparison to cylinder. Therefore, fibers which are there on the surface of the cylinder, they are coming and they are hitting the doffer surface, which is mass forward. So there is a sudden impact that the fibers are receiving as they are approaching the doffer surface. Now, when the, it is not that all the fibers are actually gripped in the form of hook on the cylinder surface. Many of them are actually lying in between the oil points of the cylinder, where the configuration may be a little straight fibers, but all these fibers anyway are coming and hitting the slow moving doffer surface and the front end of the fibers get bent in the form of hook. Now comes the next point. If these front end of the fibers get hooked, thereafter these fibers have to cross 
the cylinder Doppler transfer zone. While crossing this zone, what happens? If the sum of these fibers, which are already transferred with Doppler and anchored by the Doppler, their trailing end gets combed by the teeth of the cylinder. And therefore, the trailing part of these fibers, which have already transferred to the Doppler, they get straightened out, even if they remain in the form of a hook on the cylinder. Therefore, some of these fibers will turn and will form trailing hook, but some of them also will move as they have been transferred directly from cylinder to doffer. And if the front end gets bent in the form of a hook, the entire fiber gets transferred to the doffer in the same configuration. And as they move out of the doffer, the front end remains in the hook configuration, which will appear as a leading hook in this fiber. Now, nobody can see the formation of hooks in the, uh, in the cylinder doffer region because we can't neither see nor we can take a, a photographs of that region because we all know that the setting between cylinder and doffer is extremely narrow. It is only five of a thousand inch. Hence, we study the configuration of fibers on the cylinder on the, and on the, in the sliver, and then try to understand that what might be going on when the fibers are getting transferred from cylinder to doffer. So the mechanism that has been proposed, the first mechanism was proposed by Morton long, long ago. And uh, even uh, and then some mechanism were proposed by us also, and uh, but these are all based on the data that we observe on the cylinder surface and on the in the sliver, the data related to the configuration of fibers, and based on that we try to understand, try to visualize what is happening, what might be going on when the fibers are transferred from cylinder to upper. But all these studies, you must remember, were done long, long ago when carding production rate used to be only 5 to 6 kilo per hour. The study we conducted, that was done on a miniature card, on a high speed, high production card, or today's card, there is no data which is available. Nobody is working, neither any research going on in this particular area, that is configuration of fibers or the hook formations in this fiber. We do not really know in the modern card what percentage of fibers are really hooked in this fiber and in which directions. These data are with respect to the modern cards, a high production card, where the production rate is 60 kilo per hour or 80 kilo per hour. There is no data, there is no information available. So whatever is there is all based on the work that was done 30, 40 years ago, when the production rate used to be 6 kilo per hour, 8 kilo per hour, or 10 kilo per hour, in that way. All right, so there is a lot of scope to further work and uh, to see the, the data which was relevant or which are quoted by many of us or taught in the, you know, in the classes or written in the, in the books also. How far this data is valid in today's context, we really do not know. All right. Okay. The next question is from again Chandya. That is, how do we measure the unevenness of card sliver? Okay, card sliver unevenness can be measured on Worcester evenness tester. So there is a evenness tester known as Worcester, and the Worcester, if we run the sliver, we can find out the unevenness value of the sliver. Okay, uh, the other uh, questions which is coming from commodation is how the roller lapping is affected by the suction pressure in the drafting system. Uh, the purpose of the suction in the drafting system is to basically suck out the dust laden air which is getting generated because of 
the uh, continuous drafting or sliding of the fibers which are going on in the drafting zone. That is the main part of the uh, your suction pressure. So, what happens sometimes? The suction when there are little bit of fibers getting deposited. Suppose there is initiation of of your lapping. The suction is there. Maybe the fibers should be sucked out on the surface of the fiber, and it can prevent the lapping action. Uh, which is which may be possible, uh, especially when there's little initiation, and at that moment, the suction pressure is uh, strong enough to suck out the fibers which are about to create lapping around the top rollers. Maybe it may help to some extent, but the very purpose of suction is not to daily uh, avoid the roller lapping. But basically, to suck out the dust-laden air from the dropping zone, especially the micro dust particles. See, micro dust particles we cannot remove in the blow room, and uh, we can remove them to some extent in the case of carding machines. But majority of the this micro dust is removed uh, from the draw frame. All right. That's all the questions as I see now. We have some more questions. If you have the uh, so tell you, let me you know we can. Uh, Take another break if you some questions come to your mind. I'm still here. So let us take another 10 minutes break and I will take up a few more questions if they are there. So I am still available. Okay. So you can write or let me know your questions.
from the new prototype.
so 10 minutes is over now let me take <coughs> two more questions have come there are seven viewers but why the questions are coming only from two that way kumarasan and sanda are very active they are asking many questions very nice but others should also put up some questions you should remember that no question is bad question all questions are good questions you are at the learning stage now and when you are first time learner about these carding machine and other machines you should not hesitate in asking questions the more questions you raise the more doubts you have the more no oh, interest we get in you know teaching a subject and that that is how that happens with all teachers so never mind that uh, in asking questions whatever comes to your mind you must uh, put up those questions with teacher <clears throat> okay so let me take the questions which has come from uh, Kumarishan, the first question is, I have a doubt in assignment question. The auto level of performance is affected by both moisture content and the fiber fineness. Then how moisture content is most suitable answer? Okay, all that see point is the auto levelers, the most important part of the auto leveler is the sensor. That actually senses the thickness of this liver now these sensors mostly it worked on the principle of capacitance or it could be on the principle of thickness variation resulting in changing the voltage in the LVDT or it could be changing the pressure. So, these are the three different types of sensors which are used. And the capacitance based sensors, when they are used, which actually sensing the mass, the dielectric constant of the fibers is changed when there are moisture in the fiber. And since moisture, therefore, we try to maintain the relative humidity in the shade where do we have auto levelers attached to carding machines or draw fans. It is very important that the relative humidity is maintained within a certain range. And the capacitance based sensors are used to sense the thickness variation in cyber, then these uh, sensors will be tremendously affected by the moisture content in the fibers because that will change the dielectric constant of the fiber. That's why it is more important. The fineness will not really matter. It only matters when the sensor is based on measuring the pressure of air. Otherwise, fineness will not really matter. So, we have, that's why the answer was given that it is the moisture that affects more. And moisture can also increase the you know, diameter of fiber as well. Because you all know the cotton fibers diameter increases if we if they absorb moisture or they absorb water also. So that is the reason why uh, moisture content was given the most appropriate answer because most of the sensors which are used are based on capacitance principle. The next question is Sandhya and this question is how is the carding machine synchronized with the blown? 
I really could not understand what do you mean by synchronization. Synchronization, does it mean the production wise synchronization? If that is, then we always try to maintain the production balance in the processing of fibers in the spinning department. That is, <clears throat> production balancing is something which will be also maybe taught to you by uh, some teacher if you are doing BTEC from somewhere. Otherwise, you generally see in the case of two feet cars, the modern cars, one card, one blow room line is generally attached to eight to ten card machines. That means whatever is the production of one blow room, it can feed eight to ten cards. So. 8 to 10 cars production is synchronized with one blow room production. A simple example. Typically, a blow room production, let us say, is around 500 kg per hour. Okay. Now, if we go for a carding machine, this production will be typically 50, let's say, average kilo per hour. It could be 40, it could be 60 also, it could be 70 also, depending upon the kind of fibers we are going to process. So let us say it is 50 kg per hour. Therefore, blow room production rate is 500 kg per hour. The card production rate is 50 kg per hour. That means production of 10 carding machine is equivalent to the production of one blow room. And that way, blow room and cardings are synchronized. Whatever we uh, blow room delivers to the carding machine, the carding should be able to process the same amount of material. If there is a mismatch between these two, the mismatch could be in two ways. One is what carding can produce and what it is receiving from the blow room. Either it is receiving excess than what it can produce or it is receiving less than what it can produce. Both way it will be problematic. If the Received, if it receives, let us say, a set of 10 cards receives much more than what it can produce. Suppose production rate is, as I said, 50 kg per hour, and per hour it needs 500 kg of tuck from the blow room line. But suppose blow room line is sending 600 kg of tuck per hour. That means these two lines are not properly balanced because where this 100 kg of tuck will go? There has to be some storage space for the stuff. Some stops are stored in between in the chutes, and some stuff actually also circulate uh, in the line. But beyond that, we will not be able to really manage. And in that case, there is a mismatch, and either we have to stop the blow room line in feeding cups to the carding machine. That's what actually is done. There are a lot of stop motions in the blow room. And whenever there's excess material coming towards the room, uh, towards carding machines, and curds cannot process so much of material per unit time, then what happens that a signal goes and the blow room stops feeding tuck to the curds. That's what it is done. So there is a control system also where we try to ensure that the flow of craft from the blow room and the production of the 10 or 8 carding machines combined the match. And the other way, other uh, extreme could be that it can, suppose it can uh, produce 500 it can process 500 kg of material per, no, per hour, the carding machines, and it is receiving only 400 kg. That means the program is sending less material than what the carding can process. In that case also, some of the carbs will be, that means the cards are getting stirred uh, for material, and therefore a time may come when the carding machine will not have any material the process and the automatically sensors are there which will stop the machine. So we do not want the carding machine 
to remain idle because of want of material at the feed point. So the way it is synchronized that brewroom will feed little more than what the carding machines require. See, there is a chance also that one of the carding machines out of 10, let us say, is not working due to some reason. But all of them are connected by two feed system to the growing line. This thing can happen. And therefore, suddenly the demand from the carding side will be less because one of the machines is out of order due to some reason. So out of 10, there are nine machines which are working now. So that means one tenth requirement is now gone down. So in that case, what will happen that a signal will go and the room line will start processing at a, either the machine line will stop and stop feeding the material or it will process the material at a little lesser rate so that the balance is always maintained. Exact no, balancing is difficult. Generally, there will be always a overfeed of 10 to 15 percent. That is how we when you set the machines, there's a blow room and the curves put together through good field system. Uh, that's what we generally done. There will be some little excess, which will be you know, a blow feeding to the card in the machine. So that little excess can be accommodated through circulation of the fibers or by stopping the blow room line uh, for some time. You all know that many a time there is stop stop motions which are there in the bottom line, it stops feeding to certain um, beaters and though the, uh, the beating elements keeps on turning or rotating, but the material is not processed. It's because there is a signal which is coming from the carding machines that it doesn't need so much material at that moment of time. That's how the is synchronized. We have not really discussed about the blow room in this course, but this will be done sometime in the next year. The blow room also will be taken up and we'll discuss in more details about the blow room and how it is connected to the uh, group of cards. Okay. The next question is from Kumarasan. While blending cotton, and polyester in draw frame. The arrangement of C, this cotton in between two polyester will lead to cockling, but practically it is unavoidable. One for blend ratio 50 50, how to overcome it? Yes, it's true that sometimes, depending upon the blend ratio, if there's a blend ratio of 50 50, you have four cotton slivers, or let us say four polyester slivers. In that case, the way you balance them, you put them well, alternatively one one cotton, one polyester, one cotton, one polyester, like that. So, it uh, may be, maybe it may be difficult, but we'll try to keep the cotton slivers at the edges and put the um, polyester slivers in between the cotton slivers so that uh, somehow it can be managed. So the idea of the cockling phenomena and this possible solution has been given and uh, within that we have to try the, how to manage for different blend ratios. So uh, by you know, the way we have discussed it in the class, you re recall that no note and uh, we are also we have I have shown you the way the cybers have to be placed. So similar principle we have to follow as far as possible. Okay. So with this we close the session now for today. Uh, again I must thank all the viewers for spending their time and raising some very, very interesting questions. But I would love to get questions from other viewers because it shows 
on my screen there are five viewers and uh, but anyway thank you both to sandhya and kumarishan wish you all the best and do well in the exam thank you